To kick off part 9, we're going to jump right into it. In part 7, we finished disassembling all of the cabinet. And now we are officially to the point of the last component disassembly. As you have already viewed, it is the bottle stack assembly, or what I always call the bottle gate assembly. So let's tear into this final component in the restoration. Real quick before we start, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. This and the logo display are probably the best components overall in the whole machine. The gates themselves have a small amount of rust, but overall I don't have to replace them, so it's a win-win for me. If you don't remember, in part 1 we tested the whole machine before disassembling it. The bottle gates did work. They worked pretty nicely too. Not much will have to be fixed or replaced, which is always an advantage. So the two components we are removing first are, to the left here is the bottle gates release solenoid. To the right here is the bottle gate micro switch. Like I just stated, everything worked correctly when it was all together. But as everyone should know, if you rely on 60 year old components heavily, they are bound to fail at some point. So let's start by removing the wiring harness. Looks like a small cover isn't allowing me to remove it from the switch. So let's just take it off. It appears to be soldered to it. That's all right, because we're gonna be replacing the solenoid switch and making a new harness from scratch. There are four screws holding the solenoid on. The front two screws came out very easily. There is a cotter pin and a shaft being held on as well. We need to remove them so we can be able to fully remove the solenoid. I don't like that it's got a spring on it. I have a feeling I'm about to hurt myself. Now that the cotter pin is removed, next we're going to remove these horribly placed rear screws. Now that the solenoid and switch are removed, let's move on to the next components. As you can see, this machine uses a ton of springs and shafts. That's just how everything worked back then. It was all mechanical. Now with the springs removed, and a few minutes of me trying to figure out how all of these are removed, they slide out one by one. Because I don't know if the order matters, I'm numbering them so they go back in the same order they came out. Now that they are all out, on to the next component. As you can see, there's a rod here that holds all of these together and it sticks out down here that, that little dagger that take out a vampire <laughs> but uh yeah it comes all the way down here which should just pull out like that. I don't know what's holding on to them now. Oh! Duh! This thing right here. That comes of those all the way down this. Because I neglect my owner's manual and just work on a whim, I'm removing the four retaining screws here because I think it needs to be done next. Oh, all of it is just removed as an assembly. 
Oh, and this now slides out. Now let's get these bottle gates removed. It amazes me how complex but simple this thing is. They have so many moving parts and springs, but yet they are so simple and well constructed. And with the last gate out, that's all the parts. So with it all down to the bare shell, we're done with part 9. Thanks for watching part 9. I hope you enjoyed this part of the series. Make sure you come back to see what happens next. There's some really exciting stuff to come.